So I was scrolling through Twitter earlier this week and I came across this article by Business Insider titled, Why Hydrogen Cars Will Be Tesla's Biggest Threat. So they do have a video accompanying this article and I'll have that link down below if you wanna watch this before I go through my rebuttal. I can't play their video along with mine because I think it'll get a copyright strike. And I've already done a video on hydrogen cars and why I personally think they are a terrible idea for a lot of reasons. But this article in particular kind of breaks down a different reasons why they think hydrogen will beat Tesla in the future but it is riddled with inaccurate statements and they twist the truth a little bit to kind of meet their agenda that hydrogen cars are better than Tesla's. So today I'm gonna to be going through this article and review basically every statement they made in the article referring to hydrogen vehicles. So they start the article off with the statement that, what if I told you there was another option that could be good or even better than battery electric vehicles? What if you could power your cars with one of the most abundant resources in the universe with water as the only byproduct? So here they're obviously talking about hydrogen. And if you were referring to hydrogen as the element, it is the most abundant resource in the universe. That is a correct statement. The thing is the hydrogen you use in a car is not just hydrogen the element, it is H2 hydrogen gas. So yes, hydrogen is very abundant, it is everywhere, but it's not always in the usable form we need for hydrogen cars. It needs to be refined. And unfortunately right now that is usually done through natural gas reforming, and natural gas is not a renewable resource, so we are still using a non-renewable resource to produce this hydrogen and get it into a usable form that we can use in a car. And also when they say that water is the only byproduct, they're not completely telling the whole truth there. When you are producing that hydrogen, you are also creating emissions on that side. So it doesn't exactly tell the whole story. So they then go on to talk about the reasons why people don't buy a Tesla right now. And they give three reasons. They say that they are too long to charge, they have limited range and they cost more. So let's talk about those charging times. I've already done a video on why the whole charging perspective is completely wrong. A quick summary, basically on a regular basis, this is a complete non-issue. You're typically plugging in at home, in your garage, in your driveway, or at work. Uh, some workplaces now have charging at the offices, which is super awesome. And that's actually the situation I'm in. It takes me maybe 10 seconds a day to plug in my car every day. But the rest of the day, I don't worry about it. I'm not sitting right next to the car waiting for it to recharge. I'm going about my day while my car is sitting parked like it usually is. So this argument really only holds up on road trips when you are stopping to charge. But honestly, it's not a bad deal. Uh, I typically like to stop every couple hours to stretch my legs out or go to the bathroom or get a bite to eat. And these kind of make the stops for me. I know where the chargers are, I know where I need to stop, and I can take a little break from my road trip. So their second reason they give for the reason people don't buy Teslas is that they have limited range. And I feel like this argument is quickly going the way of the dinosaur. Most EVs nowadays get over 200 miles on a single charge. And unless you spend 200 miles in a car every day, this is another non-issue. For example, I drive a max of maybe 50 miles every day and I leave work every day with almost a full charge. And their third argument is that they cost more. And yes, I actually have already made a whole video on this as well. EVs do cost more upfront than gas vehicles right now. But if you look at the total cost of the gas, the maintenance, all other issues you have to deal with with a gas vehicle, that margin between gas vehicles and electric vehicles tends to get very small. So the next claim they make is that when it comes to recharging, hydrogen cars have a battery electrics beat. At a supercharging station, a Tesla can charge anywhere from 30 to 50% in 15 minutes, but you'll be at the charging station for over an hour for a full charge. Okay, uh, Tesla owners can probably back me up on this, but when you are going on a road trip, how often do you stop at the supercharger to fill up your car all the way? It is not very often. You're typically just charging up enough to get to the next supercharger. There is almost no reason you ever need to charge a car all the way up to 100% at every single time you stop to charge or stop during your road trip. It just doesn't make any sense. So then to kind of bounce off that, they say that the hydrogen tank in the hydrogen car is refilled at a hydrogen station in less than five minutes, just like your typical gas station today. Yes, that is true. If you can find a hydrogen station, there are not very many right now. And the unfortunate thing about hydrogen is it is a very small molecule and it tends to slip out if people aren't using those hydrogen stations. So there have been a lot of issues of stations completely running out of hydrogen 
because people are not coming there to refuel and those tanks just kind of sit idle for a while and all of the gas slips out. So the next claim they make is that uh, fuel cell electric vehicles don't store electricity like a battery. They create it on demand to power the motor. And this is completely true. This is part of the reason that hydrogen vehicles are wildly inefficient. Uh, Real Engineering has a really good breakdown of hydrogen vehicles and how exactly they work and why they're so inefficient. Basically because they're taking energy and transforming it a bunch, it is losing a ton of that efficiency. Whereas with an electric car, you're using electricity basically from step A, which is getting the electricity out of the wall, all the way to the wheels that are actually moving the car. Whereas in a hydrogen vehicle, you've got to get the hydrogen, then it's got to be transformed into electricity that will then move the car. And that transformation is where you lose a lot of the efficiency. But I'm not going to go completely in depth there. Go check out that video on Real Engineering's channel. I'll have that link down below and there'll probably be a little thing pop up up here. So then they go into range for some reason and they really don't even have much of an argument here. But they say when it comes to range, hydrogen powered carbs seem to come out on top again. Between three fuel cell vehicles on the road today, they have an average of 312, 360, and 380 miles. Most electric vehicles have a range of under 250 miles. They also say that Tesla vehicles do have some cars that are over 300 miles, and that is completely true. If you are somebody that is gonna be needing that much range and are gonna be traveling that far in one shot, then I definitely would suggest getting a car that has over 300 miles. But that kind of comes back to the whole charging paradigm that I think a lot of people don't get with electric vehicles is you basically have a full charge at some point during every day. Whereas a hydrogen car, it's gonna be like a gas vehicle again where you have to go fill up once a week or every couple weeks to fill up your tank and you might be running low for a couple days. One thing I'd be curious to see is the average like state of fueling that a gas car or hydrogen car has over the course of a week versus a battery electric vehicle. I feel like the battery electric vehicle, you're typically gonna hover around like 70%, whereas the average like tank capacity might be around 50 or lower for a gas car or a hydrogen car. So then the next claim kind of go along with that range is that Teslas do have higher range, but cost more than buyers can afford. They also say that Teslas have higher range, but cost more than buyers can afford. But again, I mentioned this earlier, Teslas are a lot cheaper than most people think. They started around $35,000. And when you take the total cost of ownership into account, it's actually a pretty good deal for some of those Tesla models. But hydrogen cars can be very expensive as well. The only problem they're expensive right now is they're not making a lot of them and not a lot of people are buying them. So the next claim they make is that 78% of automotive executives believe fuel cell vehicles will be the breakthrough for electric mobility. And I think the reason for this is that the more car companies can keep us reliant on some sort of other fuel source, the more power that they have. So think about your car that you might drive right now. You probably drive a cast car if you're in the majority, uh, but you drive that car, you might have it completely paid off, but you are still paying to move that car around and fuel the vehicle. Hydrogen, we are in the same boat. You don't have any other options. Nobody can really build a hydrogen creating facility in their backyard to power their car. They, just don't have that option. So if auto companies can keep us reliant on some sort of fuel source, then they will make more money. So then for some reason they make another dumb argument and say that the suggested retail price for the fuel cell vehicles available today is around $60,000, about 20,000 more than any entry level battery electric vehicle. And that's because the production size is incredibly low uh, with only a few being made every year. Um, then they give the argument that as that production goes up, those costs are going to go down. Um, that is the same case with battery electric vehicles. So I'm not sure why that gives fuel cells an edge here. Battery electric vehicles have gone down in price over the past few years as battery costs go down, as production has increased. These same kind of things apply to those vehicles. So I don't think either really has an edge here. So the next claim they make, and this makes their case even worse, honestly, in the US, the majority of hydrogen stations are in California with just over 40 available to fuel cell owners. Uh, and they mentioned in the video that Tesla has around 1400 supercharging stations. And personally, I think this is a much bigger challenge for hydrogen to overcome than EVs. With hydrogen, you've got to build that whole infrastructure basically from scratch. You've got to create the refineries that are going to make this hydrogen. You've got to build out the whole trucking system that is going to deliver this hydrogen across the country. And then you've got to build the physical stations that will deliver the hydrogen to cars and store the hydrogen on site in a safe way. 
Now, if you look at electric vehicles, battery electric vehicles in particular, we've got an incredible system, an incredible grid in the United States already for delivering power across the entire nation. And I've said this before in previous videos, but basically anywhere you have electricity is a potential charging station for your electric car. So even the numbers they give here that there's only 1400 stations that you can charge your Tesla, that is not true. There are millions of places you can charge your Tesla. Anywhere that has power can charge your Tesla. And as soon as you have power in an area, that means you can charge your electric vehicle in that area. So this is a huge hurdle for hydrogen vehicles not so much for electric vehicles. So then they kind of paint this dark image of EVs in the future. They say that EVs to be successful have to increase range while simultaneously decreasing charging time and price. But Teslas and any other battery electric vehicle are limited because of the law of diminishing returns. Increasing the range requires a larger battery. Larger battery will add more weight to the car. After a certain point, the added weight will no longer yield additional range. So I'm not sure how true this is. I think with EVs, we've seen battery technology improve greatly and we've been able to pack more kilowatt hours or more storage into the same amount of space and weight as battery chemistry has improved. So just for fun, I went on the Tesla Model S Wikipedia and if we look at the all-wheel drive performance P90D model, it has a curb weight of 4,960 pounds with a range of 270 miles. If we look at the 100 kilowatt hour ludicrous P100D performance, it's got a same weight of 4,960 pounds, but it's got a range of 345 miles. So clearly they didn't just put a bigger battery in the car, they also kept the weight about the same. So clearly this claim that they made isn't completely true. You can tweak a lot of things, and keep a battery of the same shape and size, but actually increase capacity, therefore leading to longer range. So then they kind of wrap it up with saying that the only thing holding back fuel cell vehicles is infrastructure as hydrogen stations become more abundant. Tesla could lose the majority of the zero emissions market. I don't think we've really seen hydrogen stations popping up all over the place, but I'm sure you've seen EV charging stations just about everywhere. So case in point here, I think you need to be careful reading any article these days. This article in particular will lead a lot of people astray and think that fuel cells are the future and when you look into the math and you look into the reality of the situation, I think that is completely untrue. So that wraps it up for this one. If I made any false statements or there are other things in this article that you think are untrue, definitely let me know down in the comments. I'll take a look at those as well and probably reply to you with what I think. If you're new to the channel here, I make weekly videos about electric cars and the market as a whole. I myself own a Tesla Model 3 and I'm gonna be making a lot of videos about that car this year, so definitely make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of those. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one.